The Home Pros Radio Show. I'm Tommy Donovan with RIC Home Inspections, and this is the Home Pros Radio Show podcast. We had a question come in through our website that caught my attention, and it was from a listener who was asking about the difference between licensed home inspectors and certified home inspectors. Now, this is a very good question, and I felt needed an answer on the show, especially after spending some time with some of my fellow home inspectors at Inspection World, the National Conference of the American Society of Home Inspectors. Let's head to the studio for more. I just got back from uh, our Ashy's National Conference at Inspection World in Orlando, Florida, and I was sitting in a classroom, and I was surprised. It was an electrical class. We were talking about grounded outlets versus non-grounded outlets, and uh, there were some folks out there, actual inspectors, who thought, well, if I put a GFCI on that circuit, the, uh, the circuit's grounded. But actually, that is not correct. And I was really surprised at the folks' reaction in the room. What do you mean that's not correct? Um, which what it basically told me is you've got inspectors out there who don't know some of the things that they should. You don't ground a circuit by adding a GSCI outlet to it. That just – it makes it safer, but it doesn't ground. What need, What's needed in order to ground an ungrounded circuit? A ground. You you basically <laughs> have to rewire it. You have to – there has really to be a folks. wire going to it that yeah. goes to ground. Um, yeah, and I've even seen people go in, in, in the past and jump the neutral to the ground to where it reads correctly on a, um, on a tester, but it's still not grounded yeah. if it doesn't have the ground. Um, so yeah, really, if, if, if you're talking about grounding a receptacle, you really need a new circuit. That's the most logical way to do it is just pull a new circuit to it. Um, if you do need it grounded. So again, I'm surprised at the number of home inspectors who didn't know that basic bit of information about electrical, which goes to tell you the difference essentially between licensed home inspectors and certified home inspectors. All right. So a licensed contractor or home inspector or anything is just doing uh, it, what they're basically telling you is we did the minimum needed in order to practice our trade in the area. So whatever the state requires in order to give you a license, you've done those things. Uh, for example, in South Carolina, it's a matter of uh, getting a certification from some sort of training company and then taking the test. You pass the test, you're a licensed home inspector. Mm-hmm. Certified home inspector means that you are actually working with a third-party organization that actually puts requirements on you as far as uh, things that you must do every year in order to achieve this certification. So if you think about it, it's another layer of protection for the uh, for the consumer. So, for example, with, with with the American Society Home Inspectors, you can't get as strict of a certification anywhere else. You, I mean, we have to actually have a certain number of inspections under our belt. We have to complete a certain number of hours of continuing education every year, and we have to prove it. So this example with these inspe- inspectors in this electrical class is are a perfect example. If they continue, if they weren't going to continuing ed, they'd be out there doing home inspections and giving the wrong information to people. Correct. Uh, but uh, thankfully, they are uh, doing their diligence in order to become the best they can be. And they're going through those, uh, um, jumping through those hoops, if you will. And another thing that ASHI requires us to do is actually, we can be audited. So ASHI has standards that are above and beyond what most states require as far as, you know, used to be in South Carolina, you'd, as an inspector, if you just looked at the roof from the ground, you're good to go. Just say what you see and move on. Well, ASHI requires that you get on the roof. Um, and, uh, and, and that's since changed in South Carolina, but there are other requirements. There's standards that you have to perform it bef- above and beyond what's just the minimum required by the state. So th- easy way to put it, a licensed home inspector is good enough. A certified home inspector is doing what they need to do to stay on the top of their game and also be the best they can be to protect consumers and their customers. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, A lot of ongoing training is what it what it basically amounts to. Yeah, and, and this industry is constantly changing. And oh, there's, yeah. There's, 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 there are always things going on, and it's I'm surprised at the number of things that I learn. Uh, going into these conferences and I walk out and I'm, God, I'm glad I learned that. And sometimes we go in these classes and I'm like, what am I doing? Uh, I'm horrible. <laughs> you know, I should know so much what more. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's impressive. 
you're looking to enlist the services of a home inspector when contacting potential candidates, ask if they are certified. Additionally, ask what was required to earn that certification. As mentioned in our discussion, ASHI inspectors are required to achieve a number of goals in order to earn certification status, such as passing a proctored exam, regular continuing education credits, and annual audits from a third-party organization. If an online test and an annual fee is the answer you get then we recommend you move on with your search. For more on the American Society of Home Inspectors and to find a certified ASHI home inspector in your area, visit their website at homeinspection.org. The inspector who is constantly looking to grow and improve is the one that you want inspecting your home, as I tried to illustrate in that conversation. Well, as you can see, there's always something to learn in this business, like we found out during a recent conversation with show partner Scouts Pest Control, Turns out, Shane and I were unaware of a couple of rather creative ways that you can keep pesky critters from getting into your home. Let's join the conversation with Megan Sicilian in Scouts Pest Control. But you know who really knows what she's doing? We have Megan from Scouts Pest Control calling in. Good morning, Megan. How are Good you? Good morning. How, I'm great. How are y'all? Oh, Scouts, happy to hear from <laughs> you. Happy this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Always. Yeah. <laughs> we had somebody email last week about some moisture issues in their crawl space, and, and we were able to pass that information on to, to you folks at Scouts. Um, and absolutely. That's, what are some of the um, more recurring issues that you're hearing in, in your realm of pest control these days, Megan? Anytime, you know, we get into these winter months, you're always going to start seeing unexpected guests come inside. Mm. And one of the biggest unexpected guests is usually squirrels and rodents this time of year. Oh, um, trying to stay warm, you know. huh? Yes. And oftentimes, you know, pets are in your house to try to find food. More so with wildlife, they're in there for shelter just like you. Like you said, they want to stay warm. Um, sure, on home inspections, you run into them all the time, destroying insulation and rafters and anything they can get into in an attic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's, interesting. it's really interesting to see how creative they'll be with. Yeah. I'm looking in those crawl spaces and pull down insulation and make nests and... Um, I have a really interesting photo of a handrail. It was a foam interior. It was eaten away by a squirrel. So the baluster on it was, it was almost as if it was carved like a beaver. It was really cool. I but, saw that picture on the Facebook page. Yeah, okay. I did see it. I know what you're talking about. And when you get up and you see that, after you hear just a little bit of noise in your attic, if we were to come out, we would come down and show you pictures of what we saw. It kind of disturbs you that something so small could damage your home that you depend on so much. Basically, you, you hit on moisture. All of those kind of things are going to bring in unwanted guests, rodents, insects. So keeping things dry and ventilated, uh, sealing up any kind of foundation cracks mm -hmm. is the best way you're going to go about to begin with, you know, of course, keeping them out of the home. There are really cool things like using Altoids and kitty litter even to Tell try to persuade them to stay away from the home because of the scent. So what so are the kind of some home. Yeah, you can crush them up. Uh, rodents hate mint. Not squirrels, but rot, not mice and rats. They mm -hmm. definitely hate mint. So it's something that you can put around your home and then keep a nice fragrance all year. Okay. <laughs> huh. It would make going into those crawl spaces a little bit more... Just take a mint. It's yeah. better than mothballs. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> that's what, what I was, was going to say. That's what I was thinking because I always, I can always tell when I go in a crawl space and smell mothballs. It's like, well, okay, they've had snakes or something, and here it goes. Yeah, I smell mothballs. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But you know, simple things like trimming your shrubs and just like I said, keeping it of the good, good ventilation and dry is going to do so much for the structural integrity of your home as well as keeping pests away. So, and that's something you can do just by basic maintenance and taking care of it yourself and having a professional come out. Like with our quarterly service, we're always under your home once every 90 days. Nice. So crushing. We'll tell you if we see an HVAC duct down, you know, yeah. but yeah, yeah, crushing up Altoids, um, get them, you know, real nice thin little powder and just enough to have that hint of mint smell. 
will definitely <laughs> deter them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what you should do? It sounds half full. Kind of rolls off your tongue. Do they, do they make any mint flavored cat litter? Um, what is the cat litter? Does the cat litter do tried. the same thing? The cat litter, I guess, helps it stay dry, right? Well, you want to use used cat litter, so to uh, speak. Um, oh, you. So you, you, yes. Does it have to be used okay. by cats? Never mind. I'll stick with the Altoids. <laughs> yes. I, I was just saying for severe problems, when they know there's a predator in the area, yeah, they tend to, sense. of course, stay away. Hmm. So, you know, severe situations, if you, you know, are trying home remedies, it's safe. It can't hurt anybody. That is fascinating. Yeah. Well, here's one. Here's a, here's a story for you. This one family felt like that they had a possessed toilet in their home because it was <laughs> randomly flush on its own for no apparent reason. Well, after investigating, guess what they discovered? A four. Well, this is an Australia. Yeah, no, it was. This is an Australian uh, story. So they they said they discovered okay. a brown tree snake in the flushing mechanism of their toilet. Wow. That is crazy. And now you don't notice that. <laughs> no, ex- well, they notice it. It's a big toilet. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, How does it fit in there? We'll, have to, we'll have to post the video online uh, on Twitter and Facebook, but it's pretty fascinating. Um, the, the, I agree. They, they, bring, they brought in... Um, um, a gentleman who was a snake catcher to, to rid the house of it. And this can't be a standard tank on the back of a no, toilet. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's different. I guess the, you'll see it in the video. The, the tank mechanism is like in the wall. It's really weird. But, Everybody's okay. going to be Googling Australian toilet tanks. Yeah, <laughs> Don't see how the snake yeah. in there. Get on our Facebook page. We'll post it. Well, Megan, thanks for calling in. For folks who want to get a hold of Scouts Pest Control, you can find them online at ScoutsPestControl.com or call them directly at 864-469-4999. Another big news story we just recently covered on the show is from right here in the U.S., where Tide Laundry Detergent has partnered with New England Patriots football player Rob Gronkowski in an effort to discourage folks on social media from participating in what's known as the Tide Challenge. Let's learn more. Uh, Spread awareness of the Tide Pod Challenge. Tide has enlisted the help of Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski. The extremely dangerous stunt involves people posting videos of themselves eating the laundry detergent pods. How stupid he had to be. (laughs) So, you know. Takes uh, all kinds. uh, Tide posted on Twitter uh, with the help of Gronkowski. No, 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 no. What the heck is going on, people? Use Tide Pods for washing, (laughs) not eating. So, folks, you know, please listen to Gronk, all right? (laughs) Uh, he, all, he almost sounds like Beyonce. No, 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 no. What the heck is going on, people? Use time pods for washing. I wonder who wrote that script for him. It must have been difficult. It's, all right. So, um, hey, by the way, do you do your laundry in Tide? No, my daughter's uh, allergic to Tide. Really? Uh, yeah. Was uh, there a joke there that I messed up? No, you didn't mess it up. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is I do mine in Tide. You know why? What? Oh, because you don't want to do it out Tide? Because it's too cold out Tide. <laughs> all right. you said it, we got to pick them <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, as we all know, he had a rough uh, weekend last week. Correct, correct. Not yes. winning in the Super Bowl. And then he got home and found out what? His house had been broken into. Yep, he'd been burgled. Yep, yep. Uh, so he gets home and <laughs> finds out that his home has been wiped out. He's had a, had a couple safes stolen, and, uh, and and now he's actually talking about retiring, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I heard that this morning. Yeah, but, he's thinking um, about, a word has it, he's thinking about getting into acting. Um, I've also heard that he might even be considering a music career. That that should be pretty good. Yeah, I have. I actually have a recording of uh, of a single he's been yeah. working on. You want to hear That's it? That's awesome. Here it is. Ready? Ready? No, 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 no. What do you think? <laughs> he's what different. Got a future. <laughs> Use Tide Pods for washing, not eating. So that sounds pretty good, don't you think, Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good single. Teaming up with Beyonce and Jay Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make the, I might add this to our no, bumper no, music. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you tell them, Gronk. What the heck is going on, people? Use, Use Tide pods, pods for washing, not eating. Because I always thought that they looked like they'd taste good. Well, football has been a common theme on the show. In recognition of the Super Bowl, our writers prepared a Home Pros radio show trivia challenge featuring the sport. Let's revisit to see if you can match wits with the Home Pros. 
All right, Ron. Ron from Simpsonville, you in for the uh, Home Pros Radio Show Trivia Challenge? Yes, sir. Excellent. So let's get started with the... All right, we've already explained. This is the Super Bowl. So what we have here for you... All right, Rob, Ron, uh, I'm just going to call you Rob, Ronkowski. Um, what we have here for you is um, a list of questions here, and uh, I'm going to ask the question, and the answer to the question is going to be related to home improvement or home construction, but at the same time, it's also going to be related to football. Got it? Okay, yep. All right, so let's see if you can come up with the answers on this one. Ready? Here we go. Question number one. Used in football to minimize the rush. In home construction, this technique is used in flooring systems to minimize the bounce. To Block. And what did you say? Say it again. I think I heard the right answer. Block. Blocking. That's correct. One for one. Way to go, Robin. Cool. All right. So I don't think Shane got it. He kept looking at me like, what? <laughs> All right, good job. Next question. Here good we go. Job, Ron. Uh, often used to describe a short pass delivered in an option play. This term is also used to describe the angle of your roof line. Pitch. Pitch. Very good. Two for two. Oh, well, you have Shane here for a lifeline. In case you have <laughs> Not that I'll do much good. But. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a small piece of lumber attached to another piece of lumber, and it's used as a means of providing extra support. Football players also use these for support. I just can't stand it when they wear the pink ones. Mm-hmm. Any ideas? Shane? Shane, help. A cleat. A cleat. Very good. Nice. That's three for three. You got the lifeline. Good deal. I'm glad you called for Shane for the lifeline because <laughs> it's nice when he participates in the show. All right, next one. All right, here we go. It's one of the rarest ways of scoring during a football game. It's also your team's last line of defense. In real estate, it's one of the main determining factors in whether your seller needs to complete a repair from the home inspection report. Uh, I got this one. You got it? Yeah. Safety. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Congratulations to our listener, Ron, who participated in the trivia challenge and won himself a Home Pros Radio Show prize package. If you'd like to participate in an upcoming Home Pros Radio Show trivia challenge, visit our website at homeprosradio.com. Click over to the Contact Us page and enter your name, your email address, and your phone number. Include in the message that you want to participate in the Home Pros Radio Show trivia challenge, and we'll put you in the queue. Well, that's all the time we have for now on the Home Pros Radio Show podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the show and follow us on Facebook and Twitter so you can keep up with everything going on in our online community. Until next time, I'm Tommy Donovan with RIC Home Inspections and your co-host for the Home Pros Radio Show. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Home Pros Radio Show. If you have a question for the Home Pros, visit us online at homeprosradio.com, where you can contact us directly and also learn more about the topics and guests we bring to you each week. It's the Home Pros Radio Show online at homeprosradio.com or on the radio at 94.5 WGTK, The Answer.